from the Catholic Underground. Today on the Catholic Underground, me parish website, S. Sue parish website, why that matters, we answer some back chat, our picks of the week, and so much more. The Catholic Underground starts right now. Stop that mouth noise. I heard it. It's time for the Catholic Underground, your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. It's episode number 278. I am Father Chris Decker. If you are listening live, you can join us at catholicunderground.tv and get your chat on with us. Joining me this week are the mouth noisiest, Father Ryan Humphreys. He's the rector of the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in historic Natchitoches, Louisiana. Hello, Father. Hello, world. Also, Kathleen Lee. She is campus minister at St. Michael the Archangel High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and she is our fully licensed mouth noisiest faith ninja. Well, hi. Yeah. 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 And we've also got uh, Jeff Blackwell. Jeff Blackwell is the technical director yes. of CU, and he's also the commandant of the Jeff Star One Near Earth Orbit Satellite. Hello, Jeff. Well, let me just say it's a pleasure to be here. He never has any mouth noise. That's mouth noise. Never. Ever. And then Ed Ball, he has no microphone, so he can't he can't make noise with his mouth. Uh, he is on on ball for our video direction for this episode. So uh, you know, you're listening on the radio, presumably, and you're thinking to yourself, Well, why do you need a video director on the radio? Well, that's because we cross the threshold. The threshold I like to think of hope. Uh, that you not only get to hear us, but you can see us too over at CatholicUnderground.tv. Every Sunday, live at 7 p.m. Central mm. Time. So mm-hmm. you can uh, you can join in the wave here. Yeah, well, here's the question. If an Ed Ball makes noise with his mouth mm. in the video cave mm-hmm. and no one's there to hear it, mm. does he make a sound at all? That is a great conundrum of our time. Mm. It really is. Ponder that one. I've pondered it, and you know what? I think I'm going to move on to the first topic. <laughs> Today... We are going to brainstorm about what a good parish or diocesan website and or mobile app needs. Now, um, for some of you, you may just want to go and tune over to uh, one of the broadcast channels uh, for your daytime TV fix. But this is actually important stuff because uh, whenever you more and more encounter uh, a parish or a diocese, Nine times out of ten, you're going to encounter it over the web before you call them, mm-hmm. uh, before you visit. Uh, you're going to encounter them in their own web app, so you're kind of coming to, to their to their front door in the digital continent. And uh, certainly, you're going to have that first impact of, gee, this website looks great. There's something good about this. I want to stay here. Or, oh my, they're still using front page extensions. <laughs> uh so, Father, w- would you say that that the website or the mobile app provides kind of the, the doormat, the front doorstep of, of a parish or a diocese or even a personal website? No, it absolutely does. It, it Nowadays, that's what, what says this is how seriously we take it. And most of, most of the time, you don't get a lot of words before someone looks at it. I look at a web page, and I see a bunch of small, convoluted texts, and I immediately know I'm not dealing with professionals. I'm dealing mm-hmm. with amateurs. Whereas you go to a website and you've got a big, beautiful picture, you've got a clear sense of navigation, whatever it is we're looking for, and we'll talk about it throughout the episode, you immediately say, these people care about me because I'm, I'm on the web and they care about my web experience. And that that initial impression, that first three or four seconds has a gigantic impact. And so even the people who are not graphic designers and and which is pretty much everybody uh, who is who is listening to the show needs to follow along here because you need to be able to go to your pastor, bishop, yeah. whatever, and say, Bishop, here's how I think the website ought to be because it's not the professional sitting in a, a closet somewhere with a neck beard, you know, who are designing the sites that really know what people need. It's you people. It's the ones yeah. who are listening who know what you need. And so what we've got to do is find a way to get you, the laity, to be able to tell me and, and the clergy and those doing the work – how it is that we can improve the experience because without that back and forth, it really is just, you know, a professional website that has nothing to do with evangelization and faith and the community of the church. That's right. So it would seem to me that uh, the the externals, well, it's almost like the gospel for this particular weekend, um, that uh, the the outward wearing of the wedding garment 
is at least as important as what happens once it's on. You know, the external is important because it points to what's going on in the internal, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, Jeff, have you have you ever navigated away from a website because it was poorly designed? Oh, yeah. Uh, quite, uh, well, quite often, mm-hmm. uh, especially early on because that was just, it was new territory for a lot of people. But still, it, 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 it boils down to the, the simple fact of when somebody arrives at that website, what are they looking for? Mm-hmm. Well, they need to know how to get in touch with you, where you are. There's a phone number. If there's an email uh, pretty much simple stuff, but yeah. for a church, I'm typically looking for uh, not only the, the location if I'm out of town, right. but uh, mass times sure. and confession times. Those are like two of the top things to look for. But um, I've seen, I've even been to some recently that I would get an email saying they're having a function or yeah. a fair or something this weekend, but go to the website and see nothing about it. Right, there's no information, yeah. yeah. Having all those things synced up is yet another kind of component of this. And so we thought maybe we'd start out by just talking about some websites that are doing it right. Um, I know, Father, um, I realized something about myself when I was researching the story that I don't visit a lot of websites. I have kind of my standards that I go to, but a lot of my intake is through mobile apps or even through social media. I never really realized that about myself until I was looking at my browser history, and it's basically the same 10 websites that I go to, Uh but they're well-designed ones. Yeah, I think more and more people are coming to the site through Facebook or through Twitter, and we have to to think about not just what the front page, because God help us, splash pages are a thing of the past, yeah. but we've got to think about, you know, is any page that my people are going to go to, is that page something that's going to be able to get them everywhere else in the site in a reasonable number of, of clicks? And that's something, again, we'll talk about a little bit further down when we talk about user interface. Right, Exactly. And so uh, you you have a language site as one of your uh, they do it well kind of websites. Yeah, one of one of my favorite websites is Duolingo.com. It's a website that teaches you other languages. It lets you interact. But what they've really got is they've got a focused site. There's a lot of stuff you can do. I mean, a mountain of stuff you can do. But when you go to that site, it's very focused. It's clear how they want you to do things. It's a beautiful site. It's very functional. It puts common tasks in my face and then puts less common tasks in, in kind of sub-menus a little further away. One of the big mistakes a lot of us end up making is we have this navigation bar that has 600 million options yes <laughs> when when 99 percent of the people just want to click on one of three things yeah. right so this site puts all that other stuff there but it says these are the things you want to do and it gets me right to it quickly and i love that and and that's difficult because i know um whenever you're design whenever I, well, I have been designing a website uh for any number of parishes that i've been assigned uh, oftentimes I'll say, well, just put a link up on the website. Put it in the menu <laughs> bar. You know, I don't know. Does that happen to you, Kathleen? Do you ever, you've never had to design a website? No. no. Well, I mean, I I think everybody, you wants know. Wants it to wants, be. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I have at some point when you used to have to, it wasn't so easy. Like You, you have to dig just, down. Yeah. And then it just got crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like websites where, you know, it's not I can go to a website and pretty much figure out where things are. Yeah. But when they label things weird or try to get fancy, I'm like, ah. Look, well, I just need to find this, and it's not where it should be. And that's a that's a difficult thing, too, to say what you mean and mean what you say. Will yeah. the person visiting the website know what you're talking about? Right. And and I express a culpa there, uh, a mea culpa, in that for the Catholic Community Radio website, I have community as one of the headers, and then underneath community, are the various outreaches that we offer, like the Louisiana Catholic Business Network, asking for prayer and things like that. But as, as I think about it and as people navigate to it, I realize that community doesn't really say clearly what that section is. You know? And so that's also where uh, perhaps the designer and the, and the, uh, the, the more logistical person uh, would, ha- would have to, to come together, the user experience and the user interface as well. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, another one is uh, is Google Keep, huh? Yeah, Google Keep is just a notes engine. It's very, very minimalistic. It's highly focused, and it makes it really easy to get at what I want. And again, usability is the big, big deal when it comes to Google Keep. But it, it I, I think the website is beautiful because it's able to get to what I want, and it doesn't try to weigh me down with features that are unnecessary. I have a, a, a silly question about Google Keep since we're talking about it. 
Uh, does it does it interface at all with uh, with a, an iPhone? Because I know it's it's probably better on an Android device. It's outstanding on Android and it's useless on iOS. They have no app for it. There's yeah. no way to interface with it except a website. Huh. And so I basically had to transition out of using it. Mm. But uh, when I was Android, I mean, it was spectacularly useful. Uh, I was it boggled the mind, and I really wish that Google Keep would have integrated with Apple's Notes app. Yeah, um, because it's a logical pairing, but it, it never did. Huh. Yeah. And that's the thing: is sometimes Apple will play with Google, yeah. Yeah. and sometimes they're like, "No, we're already in this space." So we don't. We're not interested in collaborating. I mean, do you think it's a money money issue? I'm just curious. Uh, well, I would say yes, but I don't think so. I think Apple uh, is more ideological when it comes mm-hmm. to that sort of ah, thing. They okay. think we have the well, even if they don't think we have the superior product, they'll say we have the better <laughs> right. experience here. Better. Yeah, I've we talked do it. to a couple of them geniuses before. I know what you're talking about there. That's right. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And and the and Father Ryan knows well. The worst thing you can tell a graphic designer is you don't like what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been down that road a lot, Ooh. and I, I will be down that road again. <laughs> it's true. I happen to be a graphic designer, so uh, it's too cartoony, Father. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll cut your face <laughs> open at the night. Look, look like a bat. Yeah. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so other sites we like here, uh, Father. Yeah, the, the last one I'll mention is is Simple.com. I do all my banking online, which means all my money, 100% of it, is at Simple.com. And their website is neat. It evokes a very high sense of confidence uh, that I can trust this company with my money. And it, again, has a mountain of features, but most of them are hidden away, and the ones I need are right there in front of me. And, uh, and they also do a good job of promoting features that they do that other banks don't, but they do it without cluttering up their website. And I think it's an ex- expert example of top-notch web design. Very cool. Uh, but I, I, yep. I, wait, I'm, I'm just con- concerned here because Father Ryan just told everybody where his money was. He did, but he did not tell you his <laughs> bank account number. Okay. It's six one two. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 never mind. It's not don't that kind of show. That. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, I, I also uh, have a couple of, of sites that I go back to. Um, well, again, as a graphic designer, I kind of come at things from a different angle. I, I will go for the look, mm-hmm. and then if I like the look, then I may come back for the information. Uh, and, and so webcomics.com is something that I've used for a while. They've actually just, they were using Squarespace for their hosting, uh-huh. and they've gone to a, we, uh, a WordPress install. And I have to say, it's not as pretty as it used to be, but it's got a little bit more functionality. Mm-hmm. And so this is a, basically a, a place for web cartoonists to go, and it's a forum for them to interact and to get critiques on their work. And there's a lot here, um, and they've got a lot of buttons all over and a lot of categories. And the reason I, I list it as something that, that I like, a site that I like, besides the fact that I use it quite a bit, is that I also see that there's a, a lot of good direction that they can go. They maybe just haven't done it yet. Um, but again, it's artists trying to build a website, perhaps without the, the logic board, you know. Um, saltandlighttv.org is uh, the website for uh, Salt and Light TV out of Canada, who are friends of the CU. They're good folks. And they have a, a good number of blocks on their website, but I like the way that they, they break everything down. There's a lot of content that they have, and I can see that they're trying to, uh, to figure out a way to push you to the content that they want you to see, but you can still drill down to the content that maybe is an archive or things like that because they have a lot of stuff. And then um, lifeteen.com is is really kind of come into their own. I believe they're using a WordPress install as well, and uh, they're doing a lot of things that you that you see now on a lot of websites with color and um, and just kind of throwing the headline up there to get you to click. You know that notion of uh, making everything kind of viral. You know, I, I don't know if you notice uh, that everything is moving in that direction, Kathleen, that everybody is trying to get you to click on a headline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. 10 things that you need to know yeah. about blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or right. I did blah, 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 and I've never been the same since. You know, the kind of the buzzfeedification. Yeah. You'll of never guess what happens. Right. Mm-hmm. I, 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 would, I would like to think that I will never give a homily tease like that, ever. Because hmm. I see that's where I see that's where it's going. It's yeah. going that way. Um, and then uh, I would say the morningnews.org is uh, is another neat. It's a website that's come a long, long way, and it's kind of a just a news site. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've also got some uh, some culture stores. It's kind of like Slate.com, 
uh, but they have a very simple design that scales uh, depending on what your device is. Uh, and it's also, they, they don't put a whole, whole lot of, uh, of stock in making things flashy. They just make it easy to read. And uh, I, I enjoy it because it is like looking at a newspaper. Um, and it's hard to get that newspaper look right on, on a website without trying to make it look actually like a newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the paper texture and everything like that. So those are some websites uh, just basically off the top of our heads that, uh, that, that do it well. Are there any, Kathleen, that you visit that you think are just well-designed that you enjoy? Yeah, you know, it's one just because, I like you, I don't go to a lot of websites that I mainly go to things on my on my phone. Uh -huh. um, but one that I go to online a lot is Dumbox Ministries. Oh, uh, yeah. They're a local ministry here, and, and I, I'm really involved with them, so I go to their website a lot. But it's just one of those websites that if if I um, – if I'm not looking for anything in particular, it's you'll easy. stick around. It's easy to look yeah. around and say, "Oh, well, what else do they have going on?" Or you know, um, and it's something that I don't have to be told. Okay, go to the homepage, click on events, then click on the October tab, and then mm -hmm. click on. No, I just want to be able to 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 go and look through, and it's it's pretty it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Very cool. Yeah, uh, Father Ryan and I did the uh, the Dumb Ox website way 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 back in the day before there were content management systems oh yeah yeah they're obviously using a uh, content management system now but uh, they weren't way back in the day One, so many so many years ago mm -hmm. okay uh, so are there websites that we really don't like hmm? well I think uh, I think that one of the the worst website one of the worst mistakes a website can make is to become dependent on fads uh -huh. um you know like pinterest for example you know pinterest did a really interesting new way of presenting data and you know they, they did it interestingly and they did it well but then everybody felt compelled to copy it right and a lot of people did it poorly and to me ebay and facebook are two websites that are both very dependent on fads mm -hmm. um it, you know facebook's infinite scroll uh ebay has infinite scroll and so if i want to find some Something, it's on page 60 of some kind of search. If I really want to hammer down and spend an hour searching for something on eBay, it's impossible for me to get back to it by search. I've got to know the URL of it or I'm just completely dead in the water. And Facebook, which rearranges its posts because of this infinite scroll stuff, means that if I found something and that, that tab got closed, I can't get back to it. I've got to completely reevaluate the whole thing. Uh, and Goodreads is another website that does things badly in that it's clunky. It defaults to options I don't want. And and it tends to fail to try to get toward any web fads, you know, like quality or, or you know, big text. And so, uh, you know, th there's a difficult line with web fads, I think, that, that, that a lot of mistakes get made in. Some trying way too hard to do whatever is new and cool. Some being way, way behind the curve. Uh, and then some, like YouTube, just failing to acknowledge the way people use the web. I mean, the fact that YouTube is not very tab friendly uh, and doesn't deal well with tabbed browsing, you know, that that in and of itself is an annoyance. And so I think there are some websites that 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 really struggle because they they don't pay attention to what people actually want. They're too obsessed with what could be and don't spend enough time worrying about what people actually want to do with their site. Hmm. It's kind of the uh, the let me sell you something and then tell you what it is kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Well, and, and we used to make websites, Father Chris, that were very, very, you know, graphically driven and they were beautiful websites, but we never had content for them. Right. You know, so we would create this wildly complex, really beautiful, very sophisticated site, but it didn't have anything to do with what we actually wanted the end user to experience. And so we got discombobulated, disconnected, and the websites never really caught on. And that's true. That was a, uh, that's actually how Catholic Underground spent its first five years of existence. Mm. <laughs> Just kind of, yeah. Really? I didn't ask you, Jeff, if there are websites that you liked that... Uh... I have a couple because these are people that I deal with in the uh, production biz. Industry, yeah. Um, uh, a dear old Catholic friend of mine, Everett Latchelet, uh, has hardadditstudios.com. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I like the way when you go to his site and you just uh, you, there's like no buttons. You just kind of scroll. Oh, parallax scrolling it's called. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Parallax. Yes, he did tell me that. So, But it, but it's it's neat because you scroll down and then there's videos that, that kind of rise up as you're scrolling down that you could play and look at his video production or his photography photography um, examples, uh, but it's it's kind of all right there in one place, and there's not a bunch of buttons on it, so uh, it's right up top. Uh, but then, also uh, WBRZ.com, 
Theirs is very well organized, too, and you just kind of scroll down. And, and I'm telling you, within two clicks, like if I was looking for traffic information or mm-hmm. something, I, I, I can find what I need or want to look at the ra- weather radar, for example. It's, News sites are coming a long way. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I yeah. think of uh, like um, the Gannett companies, mm-hmm. like uh, WWL is a Gannett company in New Orleans, and they are are all modeling their their news organizations that they own, so their television stations and their group that they own, after the redesign of USA Today. And USA Today is a website that, uh, that has redesigned itself several times, and they're really good at organizing their content. Mm-hmm. And so now all of their news sites are kind of being compelled to do the same thing. And that is a good kind of trickle-down. They're like, well, we have this engine already, uh, so we want you to, to start using it for your content. And uh, a lot of news sites, I find, tend to try and cram a lot mm-hmm. yeah. onto the front page. Yes. A lot. And, uh, and, and the Gannett stations tend to do a lot better job because they've already got, well, we're owned by a newspaper, and that newspaper has to uh, generate revenue by getting people to, yeah. to look at it, and so it has to be visually appealing. Uh, is uh, is the website kind of color coded? It is, it yeah, because really? you know okay. USA Today is is color coded <laughs> yeah, right. as you know, yeah. and so they they color code the same thing on their websites for the stations that they own. Yeah, and they even go one more that color coding is also in the graphics on screen. Oh, really? Yeah. It's yeah. it's a big it's a very very good uh, organizational tool. Yeah, so All like right. weather is is a gold color uh, on USA Today. It's also a gold color on their stations group's websites, and it's a gold color whenever their their characters come up, the the, the lower thirds come mm-hmm. up on the screen. Mm-hmm. Wow! So it's a really clever integration, and those are the sorts of things that that we uh, I know I certainly do. I like to see so that your eye will go, oh, that gold color means weather, and I'm watching it on TV. Oh, that's where I go in the newspaper. Uh. So really, it, it gets you to want to maybe buy into the whole package. You yeah, know, the, the kind yeah. of the appleification of things. I want the <laughs> I want the whole garden, the whole walled garden. That's where I want to live and and uh, and set up my my hovel. You know, so yeah, those are those are some websites that work, and uh, those are some websites also that maybe don't work so well. But uh, whether they work or they're not, we are the Catholic Underground. <laughs> I'm all about mouth noise. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not. It's like I'm it's like I'm eating soup. You are listening to the Catholic Underground. We are always here at CatholicUnderground.tv. I am Father Chris Decker. Joining us on Skype, we have Father Ryan Humphreys. Jeff Blackwell joins us from his audio space, and Kathleen joins us from inner space. Yeah, because she is herself. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we are we are talking a lot about uh, about websites and about good design and bad design, and this is one of those free flowing episodes that uh, that we hope will make it into uh, just things that you listen to whenever you need inspiration. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I, there are websites that I visit whenever I need inspiration, and then there are podcasts that I listen to when I need inspiration, just to kind of uh, give my brain something to brew on. You know, mm. in fact. Um, I was I was telling Jeff. Actually, I was telling my dad this today that uh, I have been working on a video for the Capital Campaign for Catholic Community Radio for at least three months or so, if not longer. Bless his heart. And yeah. and uh, the reason that it was it was stalled was because I couldn't figure out graphically how to tell part of the story. Yeah. It was a it was a period where Jeff had done the voiceover, and I was thinking to myself, well, I know that's what I want him to say. But I don't know visually how I'm going to to say it mm-hmm. or to to show it. And uh, I was I was showering, <laughs> shower time, and then it hit me. That's how you tell the story yep. of the towers. And uh, and that came about because I was looking at a few websites. I had seen a few things, and I had heard a podcast about uh, about design. And um, it just all kind of congealed together. And so inspiration is very, very important. Yeah. Whether you're an artist or not, you might be a writer, you might be more logically oriented, but uh, perhaps this is one of those, those podcasts that gets you to start using your noggin and maybe it'll, it'll fire a piston in your imagination. That's part of what we do at the Catholic Underground. We fire the imagination. Not like you're fired, but anyway. So I about to say, I'm a little yeah. nervous. I don't know what yeah, this well, is. This is one of those episodes, y'all. <laughs> uh, so 
the parts of a website and mobile app uh, that make it work, really, before you even get to the, to the depth of the code, uh, a lot of mobile apps that are worth their proverbial salt are right on the surface with what we call the UI, the user interface, or the UX, the user experience. And, and so, Father, what makes a good website or mobile app from that standpoint? Well, generally speaking, you want something that is objectively beautiful. Even if it's something that is minimalist, you know, you want to choose a font that's pretty. You want to choose something that is aesthetically pleasing. And so it needs to be beautiful no matter what it is. And beauty is a function of proportion, a function of symmetry, a function of color. Uh, and so beauty is a big, big part of it because if it's, a, if, if it's a ple- appeasing, yeah. then your user interface kind of follows logically. And the distinction is we call the UI, the user interface, are the actual elements that are on the page, whereas the user experience experience yeah. is is the way of mapping out what you're going to do, what you're going to see, how you're going to interact with the site. And while they are similar, they're not identical. So after it's after we make something beautiful, it needs to be easy to read. It needs to be responsive. So if I'm looking at it on, a, on an iPad or a phone or a big monitor, it all looks like it's meant to be on that monitor. Yeah. It should be internationalized. But perhaps the most important thing is it has got to be simple and easy to learn. There has to be a very, very shallow learning curve for a website. If I get to your website and I need to take a course to understand how the navigation works, yeah. we're done. You yeah. know, but if, if, if I go and I say, okay, here are the three most common things we're going to go. Here's an FAQ. Here's an explanation of what your service is and here's how I sign up then you're golden. But there has to be a very, very clear sense of, of, of how do I learn your interface fast and intuitively. That's right. Rule number three of Father Chris Decker's design rules, rule number three, is keep it simple, Simon Peter. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kathleen, would you like to know what rules one and two are? Oh, please tell me. Rule number one mm-hmm. is make it not look like a prom t-shirt. Uh, okay. Rule number two, no comic sans ever. Oh. Ever. Yeah. That's well, and we should add there that there should be a rule that it has got to be free from stupid stuff. <laughs> no pop ups, no layers, no nine point font, mm-hmm. no god awful banner animated gifts that have noise production and other things that make me want to drive to wherever it is you live <laughs> and hit you with a stick. Uh, and and until you've got if if it's cluttered, you've got to rethink your design for a minute one. So please don't do stupid stuff. Ah. That's right. Even Ethan Zuckerman, who worked uh, for Tripod.com from ninety four to ninety nine, uh-huh. apologizes to all of humanity for creating the pop up ad. Mm. And That's rightly so. Why he did that? Well, because like <laughs> many things, get paid. he needed the money. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, I and, hate that. and Tripod, I don't remember if you, know if you remember Tripod.com. Oh, yeah. But no. Tripod.com was one of the first free web hosting sites. So people like Father Ryan and myself um, who wanted to put our name out there and get our digital space reserved. Yes, you know, it's kind of yes. like the, the Klondike gold rush, you know, you, oh. or the land rush. You know, you go and you stake your claim. Yeah. Tripod was one of the first places you could do that. But the only small little caveat in the whole thing is you had to have a banner. Mm-hmm. And then that banner eventually was a pop-up ad. And that yeah. pop-up ad was eventually like a whole screen that popped up, you know, and before you could get yeah. to the website. And I'm sure so, you didn't have control over the content of that. Uh, generally, pop-up. no. Yeah. Generally, no. And uh, there were a lot of different types of things hosted on tripod.com back in the day. And not all those things that were advertised as you were coming to your digital space was, uh, we'll just say, formidable for families. Family you friendly, know? right. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Oh, what so, about papyrus? Uh, is that um, allowed anymore as far as font? What? Uh, papyrus. Don't push it. Don't push it. <laughs> Do not push that, it. That might be a fourth rule if there Danger. was. Danger. I knew that Comic Sans was out, but okay. Yeah, papyrus is, is, is getting there, you know? All right. Yeah. All right, so, so we've got the user interface and the user experience down. There's mm-hmm. also got to be content on your website or in your mobile app, and and that has to be... That has to be focused, doesn't it, Father? This is usually where I get hung up. 
Yeah, it's difficult sometimes to figure out how to organize your data. And in fact, some people have so much data or try to put more than they need uh, that they end up having a very hard time figuring out how to organize it. And so when in the nerd world, we call it scoping your data and saying it needs to be easy for me to get to. Like, for example, if you want to have a website that's going to include a social segment and also going to include a full on Bible and also going to include water skiing videos, yeah. you know, then you need to find a way to scope those in such a way where if I want to quickly exclude all the videos about, um, you know, water skiing, then you've got to organize it. Like one, one of our very favorite people, Father Z, has a blog and it's not scoped very easily. And so if I don't want to see pictures of food or birds, <laughs> it's somewhat difficult to surf his blog. Yeah. Now, uh, WordPress invented tags, keywords, and things like that in an effort to kind of make this happen. But developing a website means you actually have to put all those tags and keywords in. And so, you know, it, it's got to be that way. This is also important because as a nerd myself, I think that everybody should think like me. So I yeah. organize the website according to what my brain thinks is right, not necessarily according to what ordinary people think. And so even me as the priest tends to organize my parish website according to what I as the priest think is the right organizational yeah. system. And then my people are wildly confused. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a back and forth between you and other beta and alpha testers to say, what is the right way to organize this? Because you're not just going to know on your own. That's right. Your, your parishioners make some of the best beta testers, uh, you know, that, that you can say, could you, did you find this easily? Mm -hmm. Did you find what you were looking for? And usually if it's me, if it's me, father, it's pretty, but no, I, it took me a while. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, you, use the people around you, you know, um, I know I do. And, and I try not to get, uh, you know, offended whenever they say, no, I couldn't find yeah. a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? that, that, that is important. Because, and I will, I'll tell you, and I probably, I don't know if I'm getting in trouble for saying this, but even I've been to, uh, let's just say, a diocese website yeah, uh -huh. uh, in search of information, and it was difficult to find it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It, 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 and the thing is, some, some of that is from the back end, you know, in terms uh -huh. of, of uh, how the, the person who's inputting the data, inputting okay. the content, yeah. uh, is able to navigate. Uh, some of it is how it is then presented on the front end. Mm-hmm. You know, those two things have got to be synchronized very well for uh, for it to work. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely art, beautiful pictures. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was hard to find a particular department I was looking for. Right. Because it was kind and of that's, and grouped that's, in with something else. So. And that's several dioceses, uh, websites that, I, that I've looked for, had to get information from. It's, it's not an easy thing to do, mm. especially with a thing like a Catholic diocese. There are a yeah. lot of different departments. There is a lot of information out there. And but I do find that a lot of dioceses that are that are hiring young designers who are who are usually pretty darn Catholic, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting a lot better because they're helping to guide uh, from the standpoint of well this is what I do this is how I use a website let me help uh, help you there you go uh, yeah that sort of thing so uh, what does a parish website need I think first of all it needs uh, your basic boilerplate stuff like Jeff was talking about right it needs mass times. Uh, it, it needs um, sacramental policies, you know, like what happens for weddings and funerals. And, of course, uh, it needs uh, to have uh, contact information. You know, how do I get in touch with you? How do I uh, send my information to you so you can update your sacramental records, you know? Um, is there anything else, uh, Kathleen, that you can think that, that your parish website should have? Um, I, think, I, I think the most important thing is that it stays current, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if something's going on this weekend, that I can find information on the website about what's going on this weekend. Right. Um, and and I, I found that a lot of church websites don't do that. It's very, I'm just going to throw up some information on there and, you know, they're getting better. But I remember mm -hmm. going to, especially like youth group pages, you know, trying to find youth events and it was all like a year old. Yeah. You know, that's what's most important to yeah, me. Yeah, keeping things updated is definitely uh, an important thing, mm -hmm. right? Um Father Ryan, are you, are you there with us? I am here. Very good. Uh, I know we had a little power blink, which was very interesting, and it yeah. provided some some uh, good good audio and video experience. Uh, so it, it needs the boilerplate stuff. It also needs 
context. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a certain amount of context that you want for people who are coming to your site, not necessarily as your parishioners, but as people who just kind of want to know a history. Uh, again, that's where you do want some links. But I think the thing that all parish websites are missing is catechesis. Yeah. You know, a lot mm. of people come and say, I want to know what the Catholic Church believes yeah. because yep. every Protestant denomination has an explanation of their beliefs on yep. their website. Yep. But it's rare to find a Catholic Church with any kind of catechetical mm. formation at all. All you get is a link to the Vatican as if that's in any way helpful, <laughs> right. um, you know, or a link to the USCCB, which is even less helpful uh, because both of those sites are designed, you know, by blind, drunk walruses. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> we know, can't back that up, but <laughs> <laughs> not certified data. Um, <laughs> I think that that catechesis is the big giant missing contextual thing that a lot of websites really need to work hard on. Wow. Yeah. And that's one of those things that, that we don't often think about. We, we as Catholics uh, tend to think of ourselves perhaps in, uh, in a bubble that, oh, well, only other Catholics are coming to our parish website, but that's not always the case, right? especially if it's like a big city parish, you know? Yeah where everybody knows the name of this parish and everybody kind of associates the Catholic Church with that parish, yeah, I think that there is at least some uh, understanding that you would have an, uh, an explanation of, of, well, what other perhaps Protestant churches would say, what we believe, our creed, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, good stuff. Also, um, forms. I find that in my parish, uh, parishioners always want forms. So uh, faith formation registration, uh, forms for uh, for signing up for for baptismal prep and things like that, um, and then perhaps the the biggest bugaboo, if you will, if I may use that mm -hmm. phrase, Kathleen, this is what you were talking about: events, yeah. an events calendar mm -hmm. that's constantly updated. Yeah, hard to do. Yeah, yeah. it is. I bet it is. You know, you gotta have somebody on that. You know, on that a hundred percent. And I think perhaps that's one of the most important things uh, is is what do you do um, if you don't have like Father Ryan does. A, a a full time person who updates the website, who does design for the website, and that sort of thing. I mean, is this a? I don't know. What would you think, uh, Kathleen? Would this be a parishioner? Would this be uh, the pastor that does it, or the secretary? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's got to be somebody committed to it. It can't. It really can no longer. I think, in my opinion, be a volunteer position. Yeah. Um, because it just it just is that important. It has to be done well. You know and. When these things first started taking off, you know, it was very easy to get somebody, a youth really, most of yes, the time. Yes, just right. We'll get a we'll get a fifteen year old to yeah. do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you volunteer and, and, and keep up okay, yeah, that worked out real well. No, it didn't. Uh, um, I think it's very important. I think a lot of parishes are catching on to have a full time media PR person yeah. you know, who's in charge of their Facebook, who's in charge of their website, who's in charge of their Twitter. Um, you know, and, and the parishes who have done that have done it really well. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you don't, if it's not in the budget, you know, I yeah. don't know, that's, that's hard. Maybe, maybe it has to be an office. Maybe it has to be, you know, a parish staff member. And, and that's tough stuff, father, because you know, as well as I do that, um, that, yeah, it's not always a, a hireable position for parishes. Well, but I don't think it's as difficult as people make it out to be. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, the reason I believe that is because, I mean, I don't have somebody who does my website. Uh, I do my website. My, I, have, I have somebody who updates the bulletin. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, but I mean, I think if we if we think out in advance what we want to do and then slowly roll out features as they come. Now, I, now I'm, of course, I'm speaking as somebody who knows how to do this. If I had to also learn how to use software, right. you know, I, that would be a different animal. Uh, and, of course, that's one of the reasons I use Squarespace.com is because it's so easy. There's no there's no actual learning of anything. I just type stuff in. Um, and I can let other people kind of share in and, and do some of the interaction. But I think that the hardest part about the website is the part we haven't gotten to yet is that part that's associated with the digital parishioner. Because um, mm -hmm. in my brain, you know, you have the, 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 the brick and mortar parishioner who does want sacramental data, events and stuff like that. But then you have your digital parishioners who are, who are mainly there for your social interaction, your catechesis, and then whatever kind of um, whatever kind of portal kind of inter interaction you have, you may have a cool service or whatever. And I think those people, that takes an enormous amount of energy because that's just like ministering to a person in real life. Yeah. But I think that, that if you have a good boilerplate, good context, and you set up, you know, just a basic handful of things that really need to be updated, your bulletin, your events, your calendar, things like that, that's not overly difficult, especially if you use something like 
MailChimp to handle your bulletin. Mm-hmm. And if you use something like Google Calendar, which can easily be integrated yeah. with your website. And then you just put your Google Calendar up there and you say it's automatically uploaded uh, because the secretary is maintaining the parish calendar. Right. So I think if we just think about it better, we can actually cut a lot of the corners and not need to have somebody sitting at, you know, in, in a, at a website all day. That's very true. Uh, uh, Guest337 in the chat room says, uh, it's nice when these sites have something of an invitation, uh, e.g. other denominations welcome, all welcome to observe. Feel free to reconnect with your faith at our parish. Uh, they said, uh, like from a previous previous podcast, it's important to make people feel welcome uh, whose standing in the church is in flux. And and that is part of uh, being aware of the digital parishioner, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's very, very important as well. So uh, moving very quickly into a mobile app for a parish, um, I would say that number one is to make the website stuff accessible. That's really what it's there for, right? Yeah, I think that's the first step is to say all that data that you felt was necessary to share on the website is also available on the parish mobile app. Because yeah. if somebody wants to know about your parish, they need to be able to get to it quick and easy. Mm-hmm. And, and some thoughts. I, I like this, Father, uploading photos to us. There are a lot of news sites that are doing that, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, right. but to be able to upload a photo and then we might put it on our parish website or our parish photo stream. That's a really great idea. Uh, or to ask a question. This is one of those things where oftentimes you don't get to corner a priest and ask him the question, so maybe have an open question box. Um, and, and this is different than having a suggestion box, you know, because yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can filter some of that. And then, Father, I like this idea to propose a sermon. Father, what yeah. you really need to preach on is this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, the, the notion of gamifying something. So uh, I know actually uh, a couple of our friends over at Austin Catholic New Media uh, gamify their experience of, of going onto the church campus by, by using Foursquare. And so they're constantly trying to stay mayor of their church parish oh, and, you know, and have it not be the clergy. But uh, they, they have this big parish, and so they're going there in the morning to drop their kids off for early learning. And then yeah. they're coming um, you know, after lunch to, to pick them up. And then they're coming back later for an adult education or for faith formation for their kids or something. And so they're constantly coming back and and it's a way to, to gamify uh, being involved in parish life. I think that's really great, especially for like a city parish or something. Yeah. Or you check in, like you say, Father, at the high school football game. Yeah, I mean, that that's an incredibly fun way. And it, and it really works well because people like to to do stuff like that. They like to know that. He, and even if it's just a link in your app to open Foursquare, you yeah. know, that's not hard to do. But man, is it really cool because it makes people get into your app more. And the more eyes on your app, the better. That's very true, and and certainly that's uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so let's see. We also want to increase knowledge and love of God in digestible bits, um, and that means uh, having prayers on a mobile app, or even uh, you know signing up for for text alerts for those sorts of things. Um, I I underestimate as a priest how important little scripture tidbits are for folks. Mm. You know, um, and then, of course, uh, little factoids and trivia. I know, Father, there's probably a lot of factoids and trivia about Immaculate Conception and Natchitoches. There, there really are. And, of course, you know, it, it may not be kosher, but you can just you can steal a lot of really interesting stuff from Catholic trivia pursuit and stuff like that where people are fascinated to know, did you know there's a saint who actually flew who's the patron saint of aviation? Yep. Did you know there's a patron saint of barbecue? Yep. I mean, these are just kind of quirky things, but it's, Come on. if yes, you know that's on. there, then you flip open your app and you go, I'm going to go on the app every morning because right. there's some new quirky little thing. I like so that. To keep yeah. people coming back. So uh, mm-hmm. catechism yeah. quote of the day. Uh, figuring out a way, as you say, to gamify something, and then uh, to provide assistance. This is something that I don't know if we're, we're actually working in the space to do this, but uh, did you know, Jeff, that the, the Angelus should be said at, at 6 a.m., at noon, and at 6 p.m.? Yes. I yeah, and that's why the bells ring at the church usually yes. those times a day. Yes. But imagine having that reminder that you don't have to set yourself, but that your parish website or your parish mobile app will send to you. I love it. Kind of a neat idea. Yes, I like that. Um, and then, of course, Father, one of uh, one of your favorites is to remind uh, your parishioners of a holy day of obligation. Yeah, I love the idea of doing that, or being able to say, "Realize tomorrow is the patron saint of this person, as patron mm. saint of whatever." Yeah. So remember to do this, or tomorrow is a feast day, or tomorrow is a fasting day, or tomorrow is a day of abstinence. Remember not to eat meat tomorrow. Stuff like that's so helpful. Yeah. That's right, and uh, and then being able to share that stuff too is really important. 
Yeah, I mean, just being able to, you know, to hit a button and say, I'm just going to share this on Facebook. And of course, Father, you make all those really cool little Facebooks, uh, placards, little 500 by 500 things that, you know, are quirky and say, remember the assumption is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And being able to include stuff like that is really fun. Those sorts of things have gotten more shares from our Catholic Underground Facebook page than Sonny ever knew what to do with. Um, (laughs) We're going to take time for, I don't know, maybe one of these. Underground.com. Haven't heard that in a while, have you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so from uh, Tech Catholic Somewhere in the Multiverse, Catholicism and tech all in one place. Who knew what a great episode in which to discover you? If only I'd found you sooner. Well, you know, we were thinking the same thing about you, uh, Tech Catholic. Regarding the travel router, which we talked about a little while ago, I thought it might be something I needed for better security. However, when I researched it more after seeing it mentioned in the episode... I realize that it does not provide better security when using hotel or other free internet access, as I understand it. While it can create a safe network on your of your own devices behind the router, the moment any one of those devices requests information past the router to the hotels or the other hosts' free internet, it's not secure. A VPN connection would still be needed. So, if you were the if you were only needing to use one device on the free internet service, the travel router router is not necessary, but a good VPN. Uh, still and always is needed to avoid swimming in the bus stop's hot tub, as Father Ryan (laughs) described it. I love that image. It is. A travel router (laughs) does make sense if you need to use multiple devices on the free service, but not without a VPN. Um, Father, would you agree or disagree? I would agree, and the circle gets the square. (laughs) No, it, it's it's always good to have a VPN. I have a VPN that goes through a couple of different places. It randomizes, and so when I'm not at home, uh, I never use free Wi-Fi anywhere. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. I actually have a VPN as well, and I can't get it to work on my iPhone. So. Yay! Oh. There it is. Yeah. Uh, I guess we have time for this other uh, Yeah, this other let's do it. Okay. We got time. From Claire in West Barbecue, New Jersey. I just made that up, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, first, I want to express my deep gratitude for your apostolate. I can remember the old days, and I am happy when I reflect on how we all have progressed throughout the years. I still remember episode 100, and boy, do we remember 100. Uh, you have traveled with me in the USA, Central America, and Europe. We live in a profoundly different world now than when you began, and the CU is even more necessary and relevant at this juncture than before, and that is saying something. Second, thank you for thank you so much for talking on uh, for ta- I'm sorry I'm I'm reading this poorly. Thank you so much for taking on celibacy and chastity as a single woman living chastely. I too consider celibacy to be a great gift. I wish we could hear more about the beauty of chastity in all walks of life. Chastity in marriage is likewise a lovely gift. Was it Saint Francis that wrote that complete celibacy may actually be easier than chastity within marriage, as marriage does not permit one to satiate an unbridled sexual appetite. Mm. Uh, I believe he likened marital chastity to anger. In your anger, do not sin, from Ephesians 4.26. In your expression of your God-given gift of marital relations, do not sin. This is so difficult in our culture, yet the grace bestowed through its practice is beyond our comprehension. Again, please know how much Catholic Underground means to me and how much I have learned throughout the years by listening to you. You have greatly fomented my spiritual growth and I have won the respect of many a 20-something by passing on information about the digital continent that I have gleaned through the CU. I'm 47, trying very hard to stay abreast of the burgeoning technological advances. You will all remain in my prayers. Thank you, Claire. And Claire yeah. even includes a PS. If I could just ask one tiny thing, it would be to please be careful when introducing people. For example, this is Donald Duck. He is the cutest fowl in the room. The subject pronoun he is not needed and is actually grammatically incorrect as the subject is just on the other side of the comma or period. Sorry, it is just the linguist in me coming out. <laughs> I, I have okay. never thought of it, but you are absolutely right. And I dare say I would hope that uh, you don't go back all 200-something episodes <laughs> and count those up because, yeah. But, Claire, thank you very much for, for your back chat. And uh, let us know what your back chat is at catholicunderground.com is the way to do it. Back chat at catholicunderground.com. And, of course, if you back chat to us, be aware that we may very well use your back chat on the show. My goodness. Well, if you've been listening for over 277 episodes, then you know what this sound means. The CU Pick of the Week. All righty, our first uh, CU Pick of the Week. I think we're going to head over to Kathleen. Yay, I'm back in the number one slot. (laughs) (laughs) Number one with a bullet, Kathleen Lee with her Pick of the Week. Yes. 
indeed. Okay, this, you know, I'm I'm waiting for the the cold snaps to come here in South Louisiana. Um, They're not it, coming, child. It's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. It's very hot. So I dream of winter times. Mm. Um, and, and one of the groups that I've kind of been um, keeping up with is this group called Crochet Kids. Oh. Um, both with the K, Crochet Kids. And um, their website is crochetkids.org. And what it is is it's three guys who are friends um, all the way from high school. And they grew up snowboarding and, and, and you know, doing all kinds of winter sports. And one of them was taught by his older brother how to crochet. Huh. And I don't know. It's, that's you don't an, think of this as being thing. a guy thing, yeah. but yes. And so he, in turn, taught his other two friends because they wanted to make their own like headgear, their own like um, beanies hats. and yeah. hats and whatnot. Because um, they weren't really satisfied with what was out there, and so um, they kind of parted ways. And then, but they would meet every summer for a mission trip, and they would go and discover just what's out there in the world. And they were hmm. going to all these third world countries and experienced in this poverty. And so they thought, man, we need to do something about this. So what they did was they thought how simple it would be if these three guys could learn how to crochet, how simple it would be to teach people in these third world countries how to crochet as well. And so they started in Uganda um, and they um, found these women who had been in this refugee camp for like 20 years and they'd just been sitting there. You know, there's there's nothing to do. And so they taught them and, and they were – like blown away at how quickly they they picked wow. this up, yeah. and so now they um they got nonprofit status in 2008, and now they have over 150 women in both Uganda and Peru, um, and they teach them how to crochet, which is relatively simple. Yeah, and they create and they pay them a fair wage, and they create this opportunity for these women to to be educated, mm-hmm. um, and to have a job. That allows them to most of the times get out of this cycle of poverty. Wow. Um, and so you can go to their their website. And, and a couple of years ago, I went when it first kind of started, and all they did was headwear. Um, so hats I remember and, this, yeah. as a matter of fact. And now they do things like um, like scarves, bags, um, some apparel, um, and, mm. and other accessories. And it's pretty. I mean, it's it's a good price if you're going to pay about thirty dollars for a hat, but it's it's awesome. And on each tag on the inside of each article you get yeah it says um the person who made it signed the tag awesome nice. and it says where it comes from and so you know i i'm always looking for things like this that i can support that yeah. you know i get cool merchant their stuff is really cool looking yeah you know by the way um and that i can support and it goes to something deeper or yeah. just something more and so my pick of the week is crochetkids.org and just going through the uh, the what we do our impact they have some very compelling data yeah. on how they are helping, uh, especially women uh, and their families, rise out of poverty. Mm. And and that's that's her, and to provide education as yeah. well. It's and a nice little website. Too. It is. It is. It's a very it's well-designed a very well website. website yeah. That's true. That's very mm-hmm. true. Uh, Jeff, uh, your pick of the week. I have fallen in love with Google Map app. And uh, <laughs> there's uh, not a lot to say about it. I, I use it for traffic and uh you know, as a uh, like a, a, a GPS for uh, like the what do they call it? Like the the the, the Tomcat or what, I forget the name of that. Uh, you know the the ones you the, the oh, oh like like the Garmin or what? Garmin, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But anyway, so um, I just I like it. It works. It's easy huh? to use, and uh, and you tell me that there are other ways that it gets its information because it happens so fast. It so does. I like the Google Map app. Yeah. Father Chris, yeah. what is your pick? I'm just, I don't know. That, <laughs> well, I didn't have a lot to say about it. I just like it. You know, that's all right. That's quite all right. Uh, my pick of the week actually is is something that uh, I will go ahead and give a PG rating. Uh, so, so uh, you know, PG rating because Beware. it's it's in the entertainment category. Okay. But uh, I remember in the early days of YouTube, fan-made films, you know, guys that would get their, their video camera. And, of course, these were the early days maybe of, of digital cameras. They would get their digital camera and go and make a fan film like, uh, you know, like, like a Superman homage or something like that. Oh, yeah. Well, this one is, um, is a Nightwing series that's fan-made, and it is cinema quality. Really? In fact, I watched a little of their behind the scenes. They've got a couple of guys there that uh, that are actually molding the chest pieces that really? make up Nightwing's, uh, uh, you know, uh, armor. You know, and they do a body cast of the guy, and they do a, a head cast, a head mold to get the mask just right. I mean, these are pretty serious uh, folks that are. I can't even imagine how much cash they're dumping into this, but yeah. 
what a hobby, you know? And, mm. and so um, it's just really, really well done. And they're telling the story of, uh, of Dick Grayson of Nightwing. And so if, um, if you like the Batman series and, and you like kind of the, the, the next step that they haven't told yet, um, then you might want to give this a look. Of course, again, PG because there's some adult uh, content in it and, uh, and certainly some adult language. Uh, I, would, I don't often recommend things like this because mm-hmm. I haven't seen all of it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, give it, a, give it a, a, a yellow alert as you're watching. Um, but just just bask at the eye candy that is really good cinematography. So that's my pick of the week. Father Ryan, your pick of the week. My pick of the week is an app for iOS called Dark Sky. Uh, Dark Sky is what they, they say they are hyper-local weather. Mm. And um, mm-hmm. basically all they're doing is they're grabbing the local, local weather from you know whatever data Noah. service they're using. And it's remarkably accurate. I mean, and it tells you, you know, rain starting in the next six to eight minutes. Wow. And then it says, you know, light rain starting here, medium rain and heavy rain in the next three minutes, you know, for the next 12 minutes. I mean, it's incredibly accurate. And it's pretty. And um, it is. It's very, very pretty. It's easy to use. It, it works on iPhone and on iPad. Uh, and I, of course, my gigantic iPhone 6, you know, monstrosity. Um but it's beautiful and it's extremely accurate and it has a really nice set of notifications to tell you when you're a little, you know, when you're about to get wet uh, and when you're not. It's really, really easy. It's better than any of the other weather systems I've used. It is very free and it's called Dark Sky for iOS. And the link is in those show notes. In the chat room, um, uh, Tim the Sim, you might remember him. Yes. Oh, wow. It's like a Seuss book writing wow. itself. Uh, I found that the note, le- oh, he's talking about, uh, I wish you could get Siri to automatically go to Google Maps instead of Apple Maps. And um, I-, I would wish that too, because Apple Maps has not quite found the secret sauce. Yeah. yeah. Not yet, anyway. Right. Um, and then Matt uh, in the chat room says, solution, just buy an Android, to which Tim the Sim, you remember him. Uh, it says, I will never switch to Android. And, and I guess to get this sense of of, never. of of Tim the Sim, you know, having his arms bound. <laughs> I will never, <laughs> never switch to Android. That did it wonder. Uh, that's right. Exactly. He could have his own radio show. All righty. Um, Jeff, we thank those who benefit. Oh, yes. And this week, Catholic Underground is possible because of people like Christopher and Matthew. So join the growing number of undergrounders at catholicunderground.com slash donate. And also portions of the Catholic Underground are brought to you by audibletrial.com slash catholicunderground. That's audibletrial.com slash catholicunderground. That's right. Uh, well, really, four ways to support us. Number one is, uh, is, to, is to help out by giving audibletrial.com a shot. Uh, the most important thing you can do is pray for us. Uh, the second most important thing you can do is tell somebody else about the Catholic Underground. You know, go and, and tell them. And then, of course, uh, if you can, Benefact. If you can, uh, go over to the Donate Zone. Well, you know what to do. Yeah. All right, if you want to find the show notes that accompany this episode and the podcast, and if you want to find out more about what we do, CatholicUnderground.com is the place to go. Father Ryan's church is online at MinorBasilica.org. He's at FR Humphreys on Twitter. Thank you, Father Ryan. It's been my distinct pleasure. We've got Jeff Blackwell as the tech director for the CU. He's the despot over the Blackwell Communications Group. JeffBlackwell.us. And Jeff Blackwell is on Twitter. Thank you, Jeff. It's always an honor and privilege, Father. Kathleen Lee is the faith ninja at Kathleen Y-A-B-R. Thank you, Kathleen. Anytime. And Ed Ball is on the, well, ball with our video feed this week. He uh, dresses up at kids' birthday parties as Master Ninja. And you know me, I'm Father Chris Decker. You can follow me on Twitter at Digital Catholic. Join us for more from the Catholic Underground at catholicunderground.tv. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us on the digital continent. We are Catholic Underground, we are Faith Gone Digital, and we will see you in a couple of weeks because we're going to Italy. Catholic Underground.